this video is going to be talking about everything that goes on after you push a baby out of your vagina. I almost just spilled my tea. Hello guys and welcome back. So yes, I am going to be talking about the truth about postpartum. So every physical thing, every emotional thing that happens to you after you give birth to your baby. Everyone has a different experience just like childbirth and just like pregnancy. Everyone's experience is going to be a little bit different. This is something that you really only Google if you're just that curious or if you're like that's gonna be me in like 10 weeks and you're stressing out. Let me be the one to tell you guys all of the lovely things that happen. Hello Nomeo! That's my kitty. The number one thing I have on this list, something that I didn't deal with until a while after I had my baby, um, is postpartum depression. And this is really, really common. I don't know if it's just because I have a history of depression, but um, or if they do this with every patient, but they gave me in the hospital a little like questionnaire to fill out to determine if um, I was high risk for PPD or not, but that is something that happens really often after you have your baby. Your hormones are all out of whack because your hormones are already super crazy when you're pregnant and then all of a sudden you're not anymore and you're dealing with the hormones that will trigger you to start creating breast milk and it's not fun. So a lot of people can deal with uh, postpartum depression, which is like just feeling depressed after you've had a baby, which is supposed to be a really happy moment in your life. And it can really dull that down for a lot of people. So the next one on this list is pooping. This is something that definitely isn't really talked about. After you have a baby, uh, pooping can be difficult. I had a vaginal birth with Jack, so a lot of this stuff does come with a vaginal birth. I can't speak on experience for C-sections, so this is really only if you have a vaginal delivery. Um, but I tore, so I think I tore like a first degree tear. It really wasn't that bad, but I still did need stitches for it. After you have a baby, you can be pretty constipated. I know some doctors will give you, I don't know, is it laxatives that help you go poop? Some doctors will do that. My doctor didn't do that, so it was all up to me. And I didn't poop for, I wanna say like a week after I had him because I was so constipated and constipation is something that does happen after you have a baby because again body's all out of whack and then when i did actually poop for the first time after birth <laughs> this video is so tmi um i actually popped a stitch which i don't think that happens to a lot of people so i wouldn't be too concerned about it but it did happen to me it wasn't even like super painful it was just like very stingy for a while after that so the next thing about postpartum is sex if you didn't already know you do have to wait uh six weeks to have sex well i guess technically you don't have to but it's recommended that you do by most doctors i would recommend everyone to wait the full six weeks just because you'd rather be safe than stars <laughs> safe than sorry you know i got my iud in place i think around six weeks after i had jacks and then so that is how long I waited. I waited till I was on birth control to start having sex again. And I did um, try at the six week postpartum mark, but it was way, way too painful. And that's something you might experience is just like pain. <laughs> but yeah, so I stopped and then we tried again a week later and it was still really painful, but like powered through it, you know? This next one is burning while you pee. I personally didn't experience this. I only put this in there because that's something that a lot of people do experience is because if you tore down there and you have stitches and it's kind of just like a wound, um, if you pee, a lot of times it can sting and they do give you this little squirty like squeezy bottle thing that you fill up with water and I always kept that next to me on the toilet so when I did pee you can kind of like splash water 
down there and kind of dilute it so it doesn't burn as much and i did it anyway even though i didn't really deal with the burning it just it became a habit um but yeah that is something that you're probably going to deal with for like a couple weeks after you have the baby or sometimes maybe like a week depends on your healing process this next one is pretty obvious but i thought i'd bring it up anyway and it is the squishy tummy so after you have a baby it can take your uterus a while to fully go back down to its original size and not a lot of people have a flat stomach leaving the hospital after delivery i know i still looked like i was at least like seven months pregnant the night that i had him and it's just all kinds of squishy and if you are in a hospital they will come by i think this was only the first night of after delivering him but it could have lasted for a couple days. I'm not positive, but the nurses will come by and sort of squish and massage your tummy. I was told by somebody that when I was pregnant that this feels good, but it does not. They do it first very aggressively right after you deliver him and right after you deliver the placenta and they're like pushing on it. Oh my God, that hurts so bad. And the ones that the nurses come by in your recovery room, they're a little bit more gentle. So it's not like as bad but like it's not fun <laughs> but yeah so the squishing of the tummy and just the general like squishiness and jiggliness of your stomach might freak somebody out but i know that mine pretty much went all the way back down i have still some leftover like stretched skin and just stomach fat like in a little pouch with the mom pouch um but yeah it mostly went back to the way it was before mostly this next one is hemorrhoids i didn't know i had hemorrhoids until I want to say over a year after I had Jax because I started having some weird symptoms and I wanted to get checked for IBS but then I went to the doctor and she said I had a hemorrhoid and I don't know if that was a great diagnosis for all the internal symptoms but whatever. You can get hemorrhoids. A lot of people get them after because you're literally just pushing and pushing for sometimes hours on end and your body doesn't like that. They're kind of perfectly normal and there is pretty simple ways to manage them and kind of help them so it's not a super big deal but it does happen and it's a reality this next one is postpartum bleeding so this is actually referred to as its own special kind of blood it's called lachia i don't know how to pronounce it hold on one second how do you pronounce lachia not lagia probably shouldn't do that because i have to ask how to pronounce it lochia lochia whatever so this is the stuff that comes out of you after you have your baby it's pretty much like a period times like 50 depending on how bad your periods are it's a lot of discharge a lot of gross bleeding for up to six weeks after you have your kid <laughs> something that no one really prepared me for like no one bothered to tell me about this was the smell yes the smell i actually did end up looking this up after i had him because i was like what the hell is this and um, a lot of people said that they experience it too some people say that it's from using the disposable pads but i can't verify since that's all i used um but yeah it does have a smell to it and i know that anyone who has their period can know that it can develop kind of like a smell the blood can and this is just that times a lot <laughs> just be prepared for that it's perfectly normal it doesn't smell like an infection but if it does smell like an infection get it checked by a doctor I told you this was gonna be tmi i warned you i you can't say that i didn't this last one is one that i struggled with really really bad in the beginning and this is the early stages of breastfeeding i was always under the impression when i was pregnant that breastfeeding was going to be easy it's a natural thing and i was going to have no problems doing it um but that's a damn lie the first two weeks of breastfeeding are definitely the hardest your milk's coming in you're trying to practice your holds your baby has to learn the correct latch you have to learn the correct latch like there's a lot that goes on in the early stages of breastfeeding and for me i really didn't enjoy it I wanted to switch to formula so badly my breasts were constantly engorged and in pain I was leaking all over the place my nipples literally had blisters on them <laughs> for anyone who is about to have a baby and plans on breastfeeding or for anyone who is in those beginning stages of breastfeeding right now watching this video um, just stick with it it will get so much easier I think breastfeeding in the beginning is harder than formula feeding for like a newborn but then breastfeeding when they are like 
four or five months old, I think is personally a lot easier than formula feeding because I did both. Yeah, just stick with it. It will get easier. I loved breastfeeding so much, but I hated, hated, hated it in that first like two weeks to a month. So you might hate it now, but just stick with it. Give it a couple months just to really see how you feel about it before you make any decisions like switching to formula because that can sometimes be irreversible because your milk can dry up. So just a little tip to all everyone who has a breastfeeding goal. This was definitely one of those things that I Googled the most about when I was pregnant. I wanted to know what was going to go on with my body and so I figured I would make a video talking about it for anyone else out there who feels that same way because I know a lot of people do. So I really hope that you got something out of this video and I probably missed some major points. If you have a postpartum experience that you want to bring up and that you want to talk about, leave it in the comments. It can be as gross as you want it to be because this video already was. <laughs> By the way, me saying gross isn't necessarily supposed to mean that like you should feel ashamed of this. Something can be gross but be completely natural at the same time, you know, like farting. Everyone does it doesn't mean it's not gross. <laughs> so that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.